For the second weekend in a row, the Irish provinces recorded three wins out of four in the URC. And for the second weekend in a row, it was Lancer who let the side down. Welcome to the Left Wing Podcast. Will Slattery here with you. Delighted to be joined in studio by Rory O'Connor and Luke Fitzgerald. And on tonight's show, we'll be discussing whether Leo Cullen's selection policy puts the team in a bit of a bind ahead of the game against Northampton and Munster's great win in South Africa and plenty more. And Rory, South Africa, you know, we've talked about it a lot now, has become a home away from home for Munster. I think five games unbeaten. They've taken the scalps of the Bulls, the Stormers twice, now the Lions and a draw against the Sharks and like this time last year it was kind of like a shot in the arm for their season whereas now we were talking through the table and the permutations they have a really good chance to you know with what Connacht Edinburgh and Ulster to come to to put themselves maybe at the top seed even and, and really target this URC title again yeah, no, it's an amazing couple of weeks for them considering where they were after that Northampton game. You know, there was a lot of doom and gloom around the place about their long-term prospects and, you know, where like the season, they hadn't really delivered as a backup to last year and we know why. There's been a lot of injuries and stuff, but to, to kind of ground themselves and go out there, obviously having a singular focus and being able to bring your full squad makes it easier is the wrong word because going to South Africa is hard but like it makes it a, a much more uh, achievable prospect um, but to go to Loftus and win was very impressive and then I thought they, they tactically adjusted really really well and played they kind of learned everything that, that that they could learn from Leinster losing to the Lions they played a slow game they went through their forwards they kind of controlled things they took their points and they were smart about the way they went went about it and it, it, as you say it's left them in a a lovely position going into the last three games. Obviously, it's still out of their hands. They're relying on other teams slipping up to get home advantage in the semifin- semifinals. But they should certainly be looking at 14, 15 points from the last three games and put as much pressure on Glasgow and Leinster above them and, and knowing that Leinster have are fighting on a second front, which makes things very tricky for them. And um, Yeah, like they would have said out, they'd much rather be in a European semifinal this week. They'd much rather be playing against Leinster and Croke Park. But this is a pretty good backup plan that they've hatched and it's they just look like a really good team right now they look really confident and um, yeah they, their title defence is up and running I think Yeah when we discussed them at the start of the year I, I was pretty bullish on them going far in the Champions Cup because I thought their pool's you know, draw was pretty achievable for me this kind of run in kind of mirrors that opportunity like Connacht and Ulster at home and Edinburgh away like that they need to be ruthless here 15 out of 15 and they could be at home maybe all the way through the knockout stages like that's how they I think they need to be thinking about it especially with a week off this weekend with the European action and then the final obviously in a few weeks time they'll get another little breather it's really set up for them and I think they really bungled that pool draw in the end with some you know blown leads and some missed opportunities whereas now with the guys back fit and firing they seem to have a real good squad of players there once again I think it's a massive opportunity. I just hate to see them let it slip because I just think, as I said, looking at that draw they have for the rest of the regular season, it's a great opportunity there. Yeah, like, and it seems to me the key thing really is the, like, can they keep everyone fit? Like, that's really, really important for them. I think, um, you know, that, that's been their, their major issue this year. I don't think it's a coaching thing. I don't think it's a personnel thing, really. Uh, although you could argue maybe they could strengthen the, the front row. That was always going to be our concern, I think, at the start of the year. We, we talked about them going far in the, in the Cup. I think that's where we felt they might fall down in the latter stages, but they did look like they had an opportunity there, which was pr- pretty much blown as well, because even with the injuries, they were in good positions. So um, they could uh, reignite the, the that kind of, I think that positivity that they finished last season with, if they finished strong. I think 15 is probably a big ask, given that there's two derbies in there. I think for, for me, it'd probably be, um, if, they, if they came out of it with one bonus point out of the three games, I think that'd be still a very good showing and I think it would put them in a good position. They'd be very confident. I think three bonus points might be might be a lot. Look, it's not, not it's beyond like, the realms. Like Evan Rudd was saying earlier, the way they're playing at the moment, it's kind of like if they win, they'll probably get a bonus point. You know what I mean? Like they're scoring a lot of tries. Like, they, you know, they, they scored up the bonus point against the Lions. Like they're... When they click, they they do seem to be getting a lot of scores. And this weather seems to suit them as well. The way they're playing, yeah, it does. I think do you know what Snyman really comes into his own. Is and <laughs> I know, like I, I've I've thought he's been a bit overrated, but I really feel like the offloading in the in the in like on the hard ground, um, you know, he, he's and he's pretty. Oh, I'd say he's pretty awful to tackle. You know, he's such a huge man. Um, he he's made a big impact. Ty Byrne, in fairness, is a serious athlete. He kind of comes into his own in these conditions. Um, so yeah, m- maybe it does suit them. You know, maybe less maybe less scrums. Although the scrum was actually pretty pretty decent on the weekend, I thought, um, for in parts at least. Um, 
So, yeah, look, they, they, they finished strong last year and at this point. I see no reason why they couldn't do it. Um, I, I think, as I said, the key thing for them is probably going to be injuries. Can they keep all the, the key men fit? And if they have their key men out there, my gut is that they'll be a bit of a nightmare for anyone that they face. I really believe that. I've, I've kind of been saying that all year about Munster is that if they can get the 15 on the pitch, um, where they might come unstuck is possibly last 10 or 15 against a deeper squad like a Leinster. But uh, other than that, I still think they'd be a nightmare to play and they'd be difficult at line-out time. Um, and they've got a few guys like Hodden and that are good in the ground. Omati's good in the ground. Byrne is good in the ground. So they have a lot of facets to the game where they can really cause you trouble. And they've got some finishers out wide. So, um, yeah, I, I do hope they finish strong. I think we need them to, to be finishing strong. They should have had a better season than they've had, but they've a chance now, as Rudd said, the challenge is that the title defence has started um, pretty much in the last couple of weeks. So great to see. I'm excited. It makes for a very f exciting finish. And, um, you know, look, I, I, the reason I say that I pulled you up maybe on the three bonus yeah. ones, just because I think Connacht and, and Ulster will be fighting hard to get in there. I think that might be, they're both pretty leaky. So possibly the, you know, four tries is not beyond the realm. And defence has been both those teams' issues uh, all season. But um, I still think when it comes to crunch, it could be trickier to to, to get the four points, yeah. against, or four tries against them, yeah. maybe. Like, could I'm be wrong not saying that. it's a fait accompli. I'm just saying like from where I thought they were going into the season, they are the league champions after all. They like, mm. do a very strong squad. And it, it was kind of more the parallel I was drawing with the blown opportunity in the pool stages where I, I thought they had, had a very kind draw and they had opportunities. They could have been 20 points out of 20 in the pool stages almost the way some of those games unfolded. Yeah, yeah, fair. No, absolutely. And and I, the fact that those two games are against, are, sorry, at, against the interprovincial rivals are at Thomond Park helps as well. Edinburgh, I, I'm pretty sure they went to Edinburgh last year and got a bonus point win. Yeah. Uh, um, ben they, Healy versus... Uh, yeah, Ben Healy um, could come back to haunt them. But, and, but like Edinburgh kind of, they're running the ground a little bit as, as the season goes on as well. And Ulster and, and Connacht, while they both had great wins, at, well, not great wins, they both won at the weekend. Ulster had a good win and, and Connacht kind of got over the line and Rodney Parade. Like, they're, I, I'm just not convinced by either of them. I don't, I wouldn't have any faith in either of them going down the road to Thomond Park and getting a result. So, um, I just yeah, Benetton are good, aren't they? Though Benetton are yeah, great, sorry, good. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, but, but and also treat them and then let them back the in. And three tries were just awful, weren't yeah. they? You know what I mean? Like crazy ones. The, obviously the one from the mall, but the, like you know what I mean. I kind of got. I very consistently made the point on TV, and I thought it was a good one. Like they're they're so inconsistent within games, Ulster. Like they'll they'll be great for thirty minutes, and then they just go asleep. Mm. They almost fall in love with themselves and kind of just think, oh, we have this one now. And against like Benetton, I think are really. No one wanted to get them in a in a, in they a were knockout good. game. They're they a played good team. Great rugby at the start of the game, I yeah. thought Rhodes. Like, and then what I what I what I liked about it from Ulster's perspective is there's been times where they've kind of fallen away in those periods. But I actually thought they fought back really well. I thought John Cooney was outstanding yeah. for parts of the game. Some good tackle, like a great tackle, obviously in the corner, but also like some of the breaks. Like he really sniffed out a few big opportunities. And for he was them, saying that Richie know. Murphy kind of had a word with him and kind of reminded him of, of what made him good in the first place. That he really? become very conservative, kind of box kicking, get nine and. Mm. You know, like that's what made John Cooney such a you know what, three or four years ago. I was calling for him to be you know picked ahead I of think everyone was, Ireland yeah, squad. You yeah. know, so he went. He has gone away from that. But like, if Murphy can get those messages and get something out of the players that have gone a bit stale over the last couple of years, there is life in this season for Ulster. But their their fixture list is hard as well. You know, they've got Munster and Leinster. Yeah, Scarlets away, Leinster home, Munster away. Tricky. Like. That's, that's tough. Although Leinster, uh, that's the week before the Champions Cup final, so final, yeah. and it's at home. Caveat in, in, in home, yeah. Belfast, yeah. 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 So that's um, like that should be winnable, but you just yeah. wouldn't back them. I still am just not convinced by either of those teams. You know, certainly if you gave me a fiver to put on, I, I just I put it back in my pocket and either of them. Oh, league, but sorry, you know, the last three tries, like the the back pass by Addison, the pick and go on your line yeah. where it gets stripped. You know, Cooney as well, who was brilliant all game. That was a bad tackle he missed. Like he fresh aired there. Um, you know, and even if he gets something on him, they might stop uh, Bennett and getting that try in the corner. So. The, it's within them I agree it's within them but sloppy mistakes and they've been kind of making sloppy mistakes for a couple of years now you know so um, you know it's probably asking a lot for Richie to fix that but like I don't think they're unfixable mistakes that's the thing that's the frustrating thing it must be for a supporter watching them you and know? they all have a week now whether whether they're training the first half of the week or giving the week off but they've got it they've got space that's the beauty of what Munster have and even Ulster and Connacht to some degree as well they have the space to go and do it. Whereas Leinster, while everyone would rather be playing in front of a, a sold out Crow, Crow Park this week, 
at the same time, when you're trying to finish well in the URC and trying to preserve your European status next year, yeah. I think not being in the Champions Cup just allows them to really focus in on these games. It's a really well timed week off in that regard. You know, you're mentioning the sloppy tries they conceded at the end. Like in the points race, it's so close. To give Benetton two losing bonus points as well is significant. Yeah, yeah, poor. It, you know, ben, Benetton will be have, having one foot out of the playoffs if they didn't get those two losing bonus points. They have to go for two matches in South Africa, which they might not get much out of. But those two bonus points gives them life. And it could be at the end of the year, if Ulster on the outside looking in, it could be because they conceded, you know, one or two of those tries at the end, which would be a killer considering what were they 15 up at one stage, I think. In, in, in that, they in were that, comfortable, yeah, they like, were comfortable. That should game, be like yeah. heading for the finish line and, and denying Bennett on anything, but then obviously it, it ended up. I'm not sure there's a ruthlessness in that team. I don't oh, know, certainly I think not. They're, no. they're, no. Um, I'm not sure there has been really for the last couple of years, and that's something that Richie, if it is him who gets the nod will need to instill in them. But I think you're seeing signs of what he's trying to do and you're seeing him getting through to them to some degree. Mm. Um, and it's just, it'll be interesting. Like, it does sound, it's sounding increasingly like he's going to get the gig from... from, from I think they should give him a go. Like, he's very good. He's very astute. Like, I know Richie well, yeah. you know. He coached me for a long time. Um, you know, it's, it's not a, it won't be a case of the smarts or, or from, from lack of hard work with Richie, you know. He, yeah. he's. It'll be whether he can probably... I think instill that belief. It's the kind of intangible piece with, with Ulster, I think, is going to be the problem because it's certainly not... I don't think it's a talent thing. I really believe that that's not a talent thing. I think there's definitely, you know, in terms of squad depth and quality and experience, there will be a difference versus Leinster and probably Munster too. But uh, still, with the rest of the league, I don't think there's that much of a difference. And they can. this team should be capable of big days out like the one they had in the RDS. They should be capable of more of those ones uh, and just have a little bit more consistency during the year. So uh, I think he's. He, it's great to see an Irish guy do the job. It, it would be super to, to see him progress through from the 20s and see that transition it'd be great for other Irish coaches I think but I also think he's the right guy for the job I think he'll know lots of the young talent coming up I think you look at Leinster and you look at the performances in South Africa it feels like I'm going on a complete tangent here, but I'm, I feel like I'm not because I think there's loads of talent in that group but they're not playing enough and you can see because you're getting drubbed 30, 30, 40 point losses there is talent there that someone like Richie will be able to identify and hopefully have a conversation with because he knows him and say, listen, come up the road. There's something good happening here. Um, and because they've got the financial constraints probably coming up as well, those could be key. He, those conversations that he's having, his, you know, his ability to talent spot, they can plug the gaps in there and they can make a really good tight unit up there and a really good team as well and get Ulster going back in the right direction. So I feel like he'd be a great guy for the job. Um, I hope they do give him an opportunity. And I, I agree. I think you've seen a little bit of life the last couple of weeks. I thought McCluskey was excellent. He's been solid all year. But even Stockdale, the pickup for the try, that was a bit of the old Stockdale there as well. So Alicum looking for work. Yeah, yeah. Like I th they were all good signs, I thought, you know. So um, I think for Richie Murphy as well, if he's appointed, it kind of sends out the signal to the supporters. I think we'll buy them a little more time. You know, they were linked with Franz Ludica last week, you know, a double super rugby winning Bulls head coach. Like, I don't know if that's coming to fruition or not, but if it does, there'll be an expectation, I think, of immediate bounce back or immediate results or immediately mm. top table competition. Whereas I think with Richie Murphy, it'd be maybe, oh, can he bring some young players through from the 20s? Can he kind of rejuvenate everything? I think it'd be a slightly different vibe yeah. to his appointment versus if they go outside and bring in now, I know they're probably from the finances for a real big name, but even someone with a bit of a CV, a bigger CV in the professional game, there'll be a bit more of an expectation yeah. I think, of immediate results. And there's some talk that Jared Payne's going to come back as well, which, yeah. you know, the players really loved working with him and thought he was a really good coach. And I know Scarlett hasn't been, haven't been great this year, but I don't think his, his reputation is still very high. He's been to Claremont, been to Scarlett. You know, he played for Ulster and he, the, the players raved about him when he was there. He was seeing his departure was seen as a big... Um, fa facet in, in Darren McFarland's kind of tenure kind of dropping off a bit of a cliff and I think they're trying to work out which of the kind of current coaches will remain beyond and all that sort of stuff but like it's really imperative that they get into the top seven or eight the Sharks win the URC oh sorry the, if the Sharks win the Challenge Cup it could be just the top seven and like they don't that's want that's significant as well definitely yeah, like yeah. F absolutely and like you know Connacht and Ulster I think for, for Ulster in particular because Connacht are getting their stadium done and that's their focus really for Ulster with the Kingspan or, or, or Ravenel as it will be again next year they need to be selling tickets they need to be at the top table they can't really be dropping out I have at times gone I wonder would it, would, team, would it be better for teams to go into the Challenge Cup and have a season but financially you can't do that like it's going to hit their budget um, like they're going to go with younger players you're right Luke I mean you look at some of the guys that, that were playing for Leinster in South Africa and you go oh, God like why are you still there like what mm. you know the, the coaches have gone home and you're still there playing for Leinster like it's that's, yeah. and you're, like you're 26 like Max Deegan's 26, 27 like you're, you're peak, serious rugby you know, player like, yeah. like some quality touches on the weekend um, in a tough in a tough game you know but I, like I would see where, like, where I would see someone like Richie Murphy 
should be able to have a conversation with someone, with, with Humphreys too, and say, listen, hold on a second here. We've Billy Burns just after leaving here. There are guys that you have on the books down at Leinster that are really top quality operators that could make a difference here, that could be playing if you'd hope Champions Cup rugby next year. They won't get a sniff near the Leinster team. They will not. Um, so I think there's guys there that they should be having some serious conversations with because it's there is a point where you need to get out of the gym off the training pitch and into matches. You just need to be playing some matches. So, And there are um, fewer matches now as well. Even, yeah. even the AAL finished the weekend. So from there's still mm. two months left in the year. And like I know the players are going to play when, if, if Leinster stay in the Champions Cup, they will play URC games. But I just wonder about these guys who are like, you know, just training all the time. I don't... I, 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 are you a bodybuilder or are you a rugby player? Yeah. As far as I can see. And they feel like, even though they've been struggling, they still get great numbers up to, to well, hopefully, like we'll call it Raven Hill uh, because it'll be that next year. Um, you know, they still get great numbers up there. That'd be a brilliant place to play a rugby. It's still a big rugby town. They love it. They get, they do get behind their team when, when, when things are going well um, or even reasonably well. Um, so I, I just feel like there's a few guys who could make a big difference up there. Um, it's a great club uh, with great supporters. So I just feel like there's there's something to be done there and Humphreys could be the perfect guy to unlock that because if you want to get, like as far as I can see, I always want to get in the Irish team and that should be every young player's dream and ambition in this country. And if you're playing in a place where you're not going to get the opportunities in the big games, that they're the ones that get you picked. They are the ones, the Champions Cup games are the ones that get you picked. You need to be playing in a team and starting in a team for those games. It's as simple as that if you want to play in the Irish team. Just a complete aside before I was going to ask you about Lancer, you know, I mentioned the Sharks there and I was wondering what like the South African left wing version of the Shark or, you know, discussion is like, you know, look through the team sheet at the weekend. Ox, Nietzsche, Mbanambi, Cock in the front row, Etzbet in the second row, Mpimpi, Luke Anyuam in the, in the back line and they're in like 12th in the table and scrambling to get in. Like, so they're about, they're about 20 points behind Ulster even with like all these spring boxes. Now, I know they always haven't been available, but sometimes they have been available and the results have still been atrocious. So as you said, like that could be, if they end up winning the Challenge Cup all of a sudden, the margin for error for Ulster and Connor jump are going to decrease significantly. They're the best team on paper left in the Challenge Cup. Yeah. Um, like they should be. You know, they beat them. They, I'll be, like their they, team is ridiculous. They put, like, they they put fifty points on Munster. Against them, they put fifty points on Munster in the cha- Champions Cup yeah. quarter or last sixteen game. Like, it was quarter final last year. Last like 16, it was yeah. like their 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 roster is insane. Um, Ulster have actually signed Werner Cock as well. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. long haired. He'll of, be a box out. Like he like yeah. he'll be a fun signing for them. I know he's yeah. like, a bit of a slightly mad one in terms of like where their strengths are and stuff. But he is uh, he will add something to what they're they're doing up there. But he's tough like, as well. He's tough as nails. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, I like, like it. that's the danger for the Irish provinces. I, 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 you know, Ulster and Connacht need results, and there's still that danger as well. I, I think still no going into the last game, but that's a worry. I'll be supporting Claremont on Saturday anyway. Yeah. To, to move on to, to, to Leinster, obviously the, another heavy defeat in South Africa. I know you guys discussed last week the team selection, and a lot of people have been debating it ahead of this weekend. Like even Robin McBride was saying, "Oh well, like we'll see on Saturday whether we were right or wrong." And I, like to be honest, I, I think it's been blown out of proportion. I think it's definitely the right thing to do what they did to keep the guys on ice. Like I think Leinster's ba- best performance of the season the last two years came against Toulouse in the semi final after the two week block in South Africa when they left the guys at home and they were primed and ready for the semi final. Like I think I heard you say that you may like they're making the same mistakes as other years but for me the reasons they haven't won isn't because of the South African piece of it it's because they didn't perform in a final I actually think they got their best the best bounce of the season arguably it's one way of looking at a wheel though but they did the same for the final remember the rest of everyone no, that's the a final. different argument though. they should have played the guys that week I'm just saying that to bring them yeah. to South Africa like we've been talking about like La Rochelle going to South Africa how much energy that sapped out of them like why would they them the first week but why would you subject them to any South African travel when you when it's not necessary, it's all, it's, there's no time difference really. No, 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 no it's no, a tough time. physical game. When it's a they, great physical they, game, they though. played a lot of rugby already this year. Not a good thing to have before. But they, they had played two physical matches. To, two the weather's people. nice. Weather's it's a nice place to go. You, you could train. You could you could play the, the, play a load of them in the first game, and then just just rant them down, and you could fly them all home on the Friday. Yeah. And that I'm feel just like you get the points. This is a count. I I I'm betwixt them between. Like I keep coming back and forth on it. I actually the more I think about it. The, le- the 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 more the le- less damaging I think it is because, in fairness, given that there's the, like the Challenge Champions Cup finals on the 25th of May, there's a round of URC fixtures and then it's the quarter final, quarter final, semi final, final. So Leinster have a, this year have a clean run at the URC knockouts, and like even if they have to go to Glasgow and play a final or Munster and play a final with their full squad, they should be capable of winning away from home. So actually, the home advantage, while it might cost them a bit of money, um, which shouldn't be sniffed at. It's not as damaging as, as I was kind of thinking it was, even though Leo Cullen really focuses in on it. 
But I just wonder whether you could have just shaped it. And I, look, the IRFU dictated that a lot of players needed to take time off. That was their that they needed a week off between now and the end of the season. And Lancer chose. Second week is the one for that. Yeah, but, but you, they're in South Africa, so you. you, you Flying back after the. Yeah, that's. I think logistically you'd have to have difficult. more players out there. I don't know if they. Get, it would have cost a lot of money, but like Lancer have loads of money. We we we, we all know that. But it would, uh, the difference between getting a final, um, so say you, you fly out an extra. 15 people, extra 15 tickets, an extra 15 people in, so it's seven rooms, eight rooms, call it, yeah. like for a week. Is that is like the difference between having a home and away final? Would that, that would easily, that does not net off, like as in, you know, it, yeah. you'd, be, you'd be way better off spending the extra 10 or 15. But they might lose in Northampton on Saturday. You know. no, but they, but no, but you're, like if, not if you fly everyone back the week before. So say, so say they've played the first match and then they, they come home after the first match, but you keep the rest of the squad or out Or you there. train in South Africa and you fly home on the Friday after. Whatever you do. You know, I, sorry, I think once you, know, like, once you, you, make, you embrace that. it as a tour, as a bonding exercise, as a, as a, a bringing everyone together. I, thought, I think where it's, where it's damaging, and this is like probably a lesser concern going into a semi-final against Northampton, which I expect them to win and... Um, I do think that their performance will be better because they've been basically they were rested they've been at home yeah. but I think the message is sent to the players who were left in South Africa you know especially the, the more senior players who were left in South Africa as the coaching staff flew home and they were left with Leo Cullen and a couple of the members of the academy staff I think that's a bad message to send about what where your priorities are where these players lie in the pecking order maybe that's reality maybe that's where they need, they need to kind of go well I need to get myself into that setup. maybe I'm uh, overthinking it but in terms of the strategy of winning the Champions Cup, it probably will serve them well on Saturday, but it leaves them. It's they've lost control of their own destiny in the URC, and that's too bad. Like whatever about the people that were on the pitch, the performance was terrible both weeks. They drop balls they shouldn't drop. They, I know they haven't played a lot of rugby, but there were players that were that are better than the performance they gave in the last two weeks, particularly the, Bull, the, the, the team that went out there the first week, not the Bulls, the, the Lions performance. They were, that was a horrific performance yeah. by a, a good team. Last weekend, they had six members of the under-20s team from last uh, July in the 23. So it was a very inexperienced squad. And he, I think you can forgive them some of it. But their scrum getting decimated, that's tough on Mikey Milne. That's going to really struggle. He's going to struggle to get into the squad this week as a result of that. You know, Jenkins didn't really pitch up. Natai didn't really do it a, a whole lot. You know, Max Deegan, Scott Penny, players who've been touted as, you know, just Max, Penny, Max Deegan has played for Ireland. You know, I know they had moments, but like really they're getting dominated by, mm. by, the, by the Stormers. It's a damaging week for that squad. And really it's opening up a, a question as, as to whether the standard of the Leinster second string has really been diminished in the last four or five years. Because I know the competition's got much better with like you're playing against play the Stormers. But yeah, that's a big, it's a big well, issue for them. I think it's a good point you make about some of the more senior players who were left behind, like Max Deegan and Scott Penny, who would have aspirations of competing for starting berths in big games. Because say like, if we're saying, say, say Leinster go and win this Saturday, that Ulster game the week before the Champions Cup final would be massive in terms of URC seeding. You'd expect a similar team to last weekend to have to go to Ravenhill and get a result. That will be very intriguing to see how they pitch up for that one. Like, can they produce a good performance a lot better than we know they're capable of when they did the last two weeks? Because mentally after that game, you must be on the floor in terms of, I know South Africa's a tough place to go, but as you said, like they were even worse than they were last year. Like they played a good ball scene last year and got completely tonked, but they also beat the Lions, like, you know, with, with a similer kind of strength. A weaker team. Yeah. I like, think a weaker team. And it was like, it's not that long ago since, no, it's about five, six years ago, they, they went down to Thelma Park at Christmas with a weakened team and beat, beat Munster. They did it a few times, but they would, there was one where they were really comprehensively outplayed Munster. They they've won games at like Scottstown against the full strength Glasgow team with with a really weakened team with like Jimmy O'Brien on the wing and a young Hugo Keenan. Just we we come to expect a certain level of performance from even under strength Leinster teams. Um, that performance wasn't there last weekend. The errors that we saw, sure you get beaten by the full strength Stormers. That's that's acceptable. But what wasn't really acceptable I think from a Leinster point of view in terms of like you are a Leinster player wearing the Leinster shirt, you're representing the building and the, the organization. The air, like the twenty two execution, the the set piece, it was all really, really, really poor. It was really unlancer like what like you, sure you get overpowered by Franz Malherbe and the, you know, a load of spring box, but like that's not really I don't know, what do you think, Luke? I I have a serious problem with throwing away games this time of the year. I think it puts weird puts unusual pressure on people. I think 
Um, there's times where in the season where you can kind of throw out a team like that, but I just think this is not the time to do it. I would be mixing and matching a little bit better, um, trying to keep the level high, and also try not to burn your younger players out there. That's bad experiences, I think, to be beaten out the gate. Now, maybe... I think you have some strong personalities that'll react well to it, that'll say, OK, well, OK, I'm, there's a, I'm a bit away here and I've got to get back to the drawing board and, and start working. But there's going to be some people that that is a bit of a scarring day out for them, you know? And I think um, I, I'm always cautious about doing that with younger players. I just, I'd, I'd rather they were kind of integrated better within, within the group and I'd have more of my big players playing more regularly, um, but possibly um, not... Like with not as many of them, I wouldn't have the full fifteen out. I might. I thought, I thought Joe Schmidt. Joe Schmidt was really good at that when he was there. He, he oftentimes he'd have ten front liners out and he'd have five guys and he kind of he planned that really really well. I thought and got it right a lot because that's where you saw the emergence of lots of guys who were. Um, I, I think we're, we're actually good players but they ended up being like better than I thought they were because I thought they got the confidence early on they got to play with the front liners they got to play a match with Brian O'Driscoll they got to play matches with Johnny Sexton etc um, whereas I just think that happens a little bit less regularly now and there's less games so I'm always concerned about that and I, and I and to, to, to circle back on my, my first point I'm always cautious about throwing away games at the business end of the year you want to have momentum and I just think I, re- I just don't like it. Now, we, we might sit here and say, you know, it was the right decision. Leinster pump uh, Northampton there. look fresh as daisies, but, um, you know, and, and Northampton looked a little bit, you know, heavy leg towards the last 10 minutes here because they played a couple of the guys last weekend and had a good performance. But I don't know. I, 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 I still, I, I'm going back to my own experience. I liked to play this, this time of the year. I didn't have to train as often. Now, these guys seem to want to train more often and play. That might be, there might be different personalities there. They might train differently, but I like to do that. And I like to do my you know, really heavy video work, light sessions, start of the week. And then you were kind of back to your, you had your legs back Tuesday, Wednesday. They don't do that anymore, Will. I, I'm not sure they've been... As advocate, like, I'm sure there's loads of frontliners who would have loved to play, but it's not their job to decide that. Like, Leo Cullen has to save the players. We're not talking about the players, though. We're talking about the management. No, but I'm saying Leo, but yeah, yeah. But Leo Cullen has to save the lads from themselves. If he thinks that they need to be kept on ice... You know, rather than going into South Africa playing two bruising contests or even one bruising contest. Three weeks is a long time. Three weeks without a game is a long time, guys. I I, I don't care what anyone says. But if you've played if you if you've if you've been training and playing at the top level, it is difficult to come back in after three weeks. A week off is perfect. Two weeks is is a lot. Now I know they've been training away, but I'm telling you, it's difficult to get back up to match speed against really good opposition. You just lose a, a half a yard sometimes. I, I'm I'm not convinced that it's the right strategy, and I and I really, I'm, I'm I'm a little bit concerned about it. If I'm being completely honest, and I think they might be making a mistake again, similar to what they did last year in uh, in URC uh, semi final against Munster. Do you think there's any potential damage in in almost? Delineating the squad into fir- yeah, first and yeah. seconds and in such, Clive such a clear style way. kind of jobs. Yeah. I'm just saying, yeah, oh, I do. I know, no, I just gave you. I always remembered the Clive Woodward thing. Sorry, yeah. it's the first thing I think of whenever I think of that. Do you not? Do you think the same? Yeah, no, no yeah, that, like, the dirt trackers and yeah, I, I, it's just like what's I mean, even they train them like they did a week training last week in, in UCD without the fellas who were in South Africa, but they even started they trained on Monday for this game and the fellas who weren't in South Africa hadn't arrived back yet. Now that's just that's logistics, but when they come back into the building. They're coming back in after two record, no, not record, but two two fairly heavy defeats, and the rest of the group are are looking forward to Crow Park and energized and thinking about it's just it's a strange dynamic within the building. I would have thought, but I mean, you've been in there, you kind of well. How do you even go about sort of Monday meeting that everyone's in when you're getting prepared? Do you know what I mean? It's like, what's the like? Are you doing a are you rehashing the the forty point drubbing on the weekend? And they're not, in front they're of not there. They're in, they're on a plane. No, but yeah, but sorry. What, do you know what I mean? Sorry, yeah. say the first the first meeting of the week. Like obviously, my, my, sorry. My point is that you're obviously going to be moving on to Northampton. Yeah. That's what you're going to be. You're, no, the, the guys will have been looking at them for two weeks now. They'll have all the the individual traits of individual players that have all that stuff down they will know them to an absolute T and that is a strength with having this like having 10 days out I think is really great it's, that, that was always felt like the perfect amount of time to me to be preparing for an opposition it was, it was enough time that you weren't getting tired of listening to the you know the, the kind of assessments getting too nervous in the build up etc cetera, etc cetera. you had just enough time to get yourself perfectly ready for it three weeks is too long for me on a serious note. So, uh, look, I, it'd be interesting to see how they, how they cope with it, if it has any impact, think, if they have a slow, sluggish start. Some of it comes down to the logistics. I think in an ideal world, they would have probably played some guys that Lions game. But because it's in South Africa and it require, it's a lot of money, it's a lot of moving parts. As we said, the things with bringing down a second squad. And I take your point about, oh... Well, you know, if they lose out in the final... Yeah, I take your point about yeah, getting yeah. it in the back end. But I can see why it's not easy to be like, we'll play one team this week and then we'll bring in a whole other 23-man or 26-man squad for the second week. 
that's not probably logistically feasible. But I don't think I was suggesting that. I was suggesting the or, first week. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, but bringing the other guys, but bring them for the whole thing. Just bring yeah. the whole squad down. Like I think, like your 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 big costs there are going to be your flights, uh, your probably your meal and your meals and your and your room. But like it's an extra ten. It's probably an extra. What is it? There's an extra 10 rooms or eight, eight, call it eight rooms that you have possibly with, you know, 15 other bodies to feed and, you know, 15 more flights. I honestly don't think in the grand scheme that they're, that they're actually that. I think it's an, I think if you viewed that as an investment in the end of the season, which they've put themselves in a position to say, well, if we do, if we, if we pinch one of these games here, we're in great shape to get a final at home if we go all the way. Then I, I think it's a risk worth taking, to be, to be completely honest with you. And I think, um, I think I think it's a risk to not take the guys as well. That's what I think. You're gonna come in? No, uh, I still think they'll beat Northampton. I don't. I don't, so do I. I don't think. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> and I and I think. And show. <laughs> and I think that, that they will. They have enough to. If even if they lose home advantage, as I said earlier, they have enough to make a good fist of the URC and win a double this year. Like they have, when it comes down to it, when once once the cards fall, they'll they'll be in the playoffs. And they have more than enough to even have to have. To, it's unlikely they'll have to go away three games in a row. But like Munster did it last year. They their their first choice twenty three is the strongest in the competition. And they they, you know, for all that we we can debate it all, but I still think they're in a really good position at the end of it all. Good and podcast father though, to be fair. I know it like it sits wrong. I think that's that's what it is. It feels like a risk. Feels yeah. like an unnecessary risk to me yeah. for. And, and as I said, the, the money thing probably did play a part possibly, but I think they might be taking. A, they I, might have. I think one of the things we talked about last year after the Champions Cup final was was how much of an importance they put on the Champions Cup and how it became the fact that it was in the Viva, the fifth star thing, the photos on the wall, the building. Mm. It became all consuming, and I just think by almost f- having the twenty three focusing on the one thing and not giving them the week to week distraction of URC, it risks doing that again. You Did know, they, and that's, that's right after twenty five minutes because of that as well. Do you, is there anything in that? Is there? Am I, am I crazy to think that after like that long off? not playing a game and they play kind of sporadically enough towards the end of last season as well like the, the front liners did is there anything in like that That 30 they looked like completely spent now they it was one of the best starts to a game I've ever seen from any team like they completely blew La Rochelle away but they were completely spent after that too like that that to me that to me looked like a team who'd built it up massively who had, hadn't played enough rugby had been preparing themselves perfectly for this thing but hadn't really played, hadn't really hardened themselves to the end of the season, the tough games that you have, that you that you only really get in the legs from actually playing in the games. Do you know, do you know what I mean? Like, t- yeah. you know when you're playing against a team that's fighting for their life, they know it could be their last game of the season. It's 80 minutes of like, you know, pressure and, you know, trying to dig out, a, a, you know, dig out a try, for example, even if you're on top of them, dig out a try against a team that's defending for their life. Like, they're all things that... There's a fitness in that. There's a, a, a like a, a concentration. There's a ruthless nature that you kind of need. I, I think I'd love to be playing more of those games, even if they are only league games. So, do, do you think there's anything in that in the final? Didn't they? Like it, they look tired. We'll never at the know. End like it, it's like it's the opposite of the Andy Farrell played the same team over and over again at the World Cup. Mm. You know, it, like yeah, you know, he played the same team over 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 again at the World Cup. They got knocked out in the quarterfinal. People said he didn't change enough. So, we're always looking for reasons and and. But the, like the fact is that they played well for twenty minutes and then stopped playing, and uh, whether that was mental fatigue or mental, it just got on top of them, or whether it was just La Rochelle were better across eighty minutes, we'll, we'll never know. But I presume they've interrogated it forensically. I mean, I've t- asked Leo Cullen about it, and he'd like he's, I think you know, he probably had a sleepless summer, never mind sleepless well, nights, yeah, he's thinking about it, and he's poured everything into it, and. I think he's tweaked the strategy to some degree. Even though he, like I think he, he did he fly home last year and leave Sean O'Brien out there to to, to manage the team last year. Right, yeah. Whereas he yeah. stayed this time, yeah, yeah. so he's tried to ch- tweak it a little bit. I, I, you know, I wonder about whether you know could Ross Maloney have played again? Could Harry Byrne played again a second time? Did they really have to go? You know, did they have to rest as many people as they did for the second game? For all he, I know Hugo Keenan's a, a doubt. You know, they were in South Africa, but but they didn't play. You know, you brought them all the way there, you didn't play them like the. But He's again, it's not a challenge as well, though, doesn't he? He's trying to keep everyone happy there too. Like that's another challenge. Is their squad too big? Yeah, that's that's it's they're, they're carrying a lot of players. Like, do they really need Max Deegan? You know, they have the Lions, the Lions number eight, and the the the, the probably the Ireland, best eight, and, and probably one of the best, not the best in the world. Yeah. And they have Max Deegan, and they've got James Colhan coming through, who's everyone said, you know, from what I've seen, is is really really good, and everyone rates him really really highly. Yeah. You know, like he's sitting on a good salary, and like he's a really good player. Like in November twenty twenty two. Max Deegan, Andy Farrell was looking at Max Deegan as a serious World Cup prospect. He really rated him. He played in games back then. It's not that long ago. He got a bad injury at a bad time. 
And now he's like, he's going to be in a tracksuit doing the warm-up on Saturday at Crow Park when he, in his mind, like he, I does, I, he's he, the he classic example. He might not even be in a tracksuit. And he's a really good player. Yeah. And he, he might and, not even be in a tracksuit role. And he's a he player, whether it's going to Ulster, whether it's going to the top 14, whether it's going to a, a premiership club like Ross Maloney's doing, he could do a tight burn on it. He could go to somewhere for two years and then get a move back. Like I just think this. He was Penny's under another one player of the year in 2016. So what's yeah. that? He'd be 28 now. He was in the same team as Porter, Ryan. Put that, Bell. Putting that CV out to a coach, you'd have to think like his highlight really. No, well, just in terms of like quality the opportunities. You said 2020, he he played in that Six Nations game. COVID came. He got an injury. His career hasn't, unfortunately, like for he, him. Was in, he was in November 2022. They really rated him. They yeah. really liked what he brought. He didn't play, though, did he? I, mean, I, can't remember, I don't I, think he did. I can't remember if he got a cap oh, or not, but it, he, he was definitely in, involved yeah. around that time. I may, maybe I'll get my dates mixed up, but I know that the, the Irish coaching ticket really liked what he brought. He had something about him, an injury struck, and he, but he, he, like he, he, they can't pick him if he's not playing in yeah. these games. I mean, geez, they get enough grief for picking Leinster players who were in the 23. <laughs> they can't be making lads who aren't being involved. But I mean, Penny got picked at times when he, like Penny, has Penny played Champions Cup at this stage? He, he has now, yeah, yeah. But you know, for, he, was, he was picked for Ireland before he played Champions Cup. Um, but like, he's not going to get in. He's behind, like Deegan, he's behind Will Connors and Mac, and uh, and Josh van der Fleer. And if they lose both of them, they probably play Caelan Doris at seven. Like, yeah. you know, that's that's a really tough st- position for him to be in. Just want to fire through three quick selection talking points ahead of the Saturday before we kind of get towards the end. Will Connors or Josh van der Fleer who do you think starts at open side Connors Josh what do you think what are you, what's the thinking there I th- I think it's a horses for courses I, I Connors did very little wrong against La Rochelle I don't think he was as good as he was in the first La Rochelle game I think the profile of athlete that he's going up against probably doesn't necessarily need the, the chop focus but I keep him in the 23 I go 6-2 again I think like again if we don't play Josh van der Freer he's coming off the bench he's only played 40 minutes in what six weeks going into a final if he doesn't play in the other games um, and like Josh van der Freer is still a brilliant open side flanker who still Ireland's first he, choice I just he, yeah and like undisputed Ireland's first choice going to yeah. South Africa I, I think I understand the selection for La Rochelle I think Connors did a good job without being outstanding but I, f- I struggled to see why you wouldn't have Josh starting in this game but why do you think Connors then? because he played great against La Rochelle <laughs> You know, in a in a the toughest match, the two toughest matches this year, he's been. I, I thought he was really good, actually. I thought he was very solid. Like I think, um, he's probably not going to have as many flashy moments. And I like having Josh on the bench. <laughs> I don't know. I, I thought that worked really well. So, uh, but I, to be honest with you, that doesn't matter. That that to be honest, that that doesn't really matter who starts it. But I would one hundred percent have him on the bench. So I agree oh, with Rudd. So six two. What are you thinking? Oh six two. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think Leinster have to do that. Yeah, there is a school of thought that six two versus La Rochelle, they have big forwards. <laughs> Northampton not quite the same profile. Maybe you go five three I, and I, get an I extra back in the bench. Away teams, but especially say if are you starting ring rows? Right oh back. yeah, okay, definitely. straight back in the team. Okay, yeah, because uh, if he's not hundred percent fit, you have him as yeah, number twenty three potentially. I, you know, and you have that. Weapon. Uh, maybe so we don't know that. That's what I'm saying. I'm assuming he's fully fit. call if Keenan's fit. No, you do start being wrong because you're captain. Like he's your co-captain, yeah. and, and and again, as you said, the to, to Van der Fleer point, he's played very little rugby since Leicester in January. He's played one game against Scotland off the bench, I think. Or am I? Well, yeah, you could start Osborne and either put Ringrose on the bench with Frawley a fullback, or go to Gary. Right, you need to play against the Ospreys and Converse. To, you know, in contrast to everyone else, play in the two URC games and be fit for the final because you haven't played. And in fairness, Osborne was brilliant in in the. The other game, he gives you the sorry in the La Rochelle game, he gives you a left foot kicking option. But I think your co-captain, yeah. after you know, given the credit that he has has in the bank, and he has a very good demonstrated capacity to hit the ground running after long absences. He's, yeah, I, I wouldn't have that guy. much concern. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I well, the key thing for me is the point you, as I said, you raised with Josh on the Fleer. Like d- they might not play again until if they get to the final. Yeah, I wonder will 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 Gary and Jimmy O'Brien and people, you know, will they be involved yeah. in those other surely games against the yeah. Ospreys at home? Yeah, yeah. 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 depends on how they feel about minutes. You know, yeah. you know. They, it, and then they know he's done a lot of running. He's been on the pitch for a lot of training. I, I, like, I think he he hasn't taken a lot of contact because it's been a shoulder injury. But he's done a lot of on pitch training, so he might not be as far off it as, as yeah, fair. he would be if he had a you know a well, lower. It was a little rusty against Scotland. He dropped the ball near the line. That you know, like, fair, so he, yeah. and that was, that was his first appearance since January. And like, they'll yeah. know that. I think like they'll have seen him training. So if they, yeah. and like Osborne's such a good option. It's I, a very hard. I, mean, I think he should start. No, I, I think if he's fit, he should come back in because you you want to get minutes into him ahead of we're talking about the end game. Like, so are we going to come in on the ring row stuff? Well, there? I suppose I was t- like I'm t- I'm t- keen and I, I hadn't thought of. Keenan has been an issue um, 
and I suppose if you have O'Brien back as well, you know what I mean. O'Brien, what, do you go five three? Uh, I don't know. Funny, we asked I asked Leo about O'Brien, or someone asked Leo about O'Brien last week, and he said, "Look, we a big game to put him back in because he's played even less rugby than than Gary Ringo." Okay, I don't think I think, and he can't take. I think Larmer has earned his. Oh, he's been really good. Keep his spot. So yeah, and, I, and Osborne has too, but it's the captain. I uh, my gut is that he would play him, but it's just if if he goes six two and you've got Gary fit and Hugo fit, then you have to have Frawley in the 23 jersey and that's really he's harsh on Osborne. He's a lot, isn't he though? Like if those two guys are just back, you just don't know. Yeah, mate, yeah. You'd love to have seen them one game before, wouldn't you? Just maybe. Maybe you're right. Maybe it has to be a 5-3. But look, if, if if we're assuming everyone's 100% fit and they all last the pace, I think Leicester should be going with 6-2. They've got so much power. Like so much power. Like, they, like you talk about kind of containing La Rochelle but I think what you can do against other teams, you can blow them away. Like, and you can go through them. Like, Leinster then don't have to. Like, I always think if they're thinking through teams rather than around teams, I think that's where Leinster are at their best. I think when they're really combative, they go at teams in the tight, they engage with them there, and they use the resources that they have, which I think Nina Barr has done very well, in fairness. Regardless of all the other stuff, you can see he brings on the guys early because he trusts the guys on the bench. So uh, I think he used the power really well there. He's really astute there. And, um, I'd be thinking six two, blow them away. If it's five three because of Hugo's back and, and you got to um, drop, do, do, do you start Josh van der Fleer then? Because you probably Will Connors is the one who loses out because Jack Collins your back row. Yeah, God. So, so God, it's actually. I think so. Yeah. I, I I said after the La Rochelle game, it wouldn't surprise me if Will Connors actually. You might not see I, him again. <laughs> you know, I think he played against Toulouse if they're playing Toulouse. Yeah, probably to Toulouse. But I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't feature massively in the URC run. And he did Sunday media. Uh, he stayed behind. He didn't go to South Africa. If he's not going to be playing, they would have sent him to South Africa, surely. But they don't know who's fit yet. That's the That's point. True. Like so, yeah. as in they have to keep. They might. No, look, I do think he'll play this weekend. But as I said at the time, I thought it was a, as I you said, a horse. Doing... I thought it was a La Rochelle focused selection. Sure, he didn't. He barely featured between the La Rochelle games. And he's been fit, I think. I'd say Hugo won't. I'd say Hugo Keenan won't play, and it'll be a six-two with Frawley at fifteen. You don't think Hugo will play? No. I don't think he's going to make it. I, they, they put him there just the way they listed it out the other day. I don't. I don't know. That's a tricky injury. He's been kind of struggling with it for a while, and he's yeah, kind of come back. Not going to come back too quick from. Um, yeah. yeah, I might. I don't know, and and it makes the equation simpler if he doesn't. Not that that's a reason not to pick him if he's fit. Well, he can't pick the, like not pick the best. No, back in yeah. the world. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's ever easier. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think Fair, yeah. against that back three, like the. I did think Dylan Lade slipped past Frawley twice uh, on counter attack early in the first half in that last game, and I, I would have a little bit of concern that like George Furbank is probably one of Northampton's best attacking weapons, and just you know cut, carved Ireland open in the early stages off a James Lowe kick in the England game. Mm. So Frawley needs to get up with his chasing line and nail that first tackle. I don't think Hugo Keenan misses that tackle necessarily. Where, he's a better athlete. Um, he's a he's a back three player. Yeah, no, I think that's. I think. <laughs> I think. Like Frawley, I think can cover. Can, can he's a great paper. player. He's a really good rugby. And player. he can cover most of it, but I do think there's a risk there, especially against that Northampton back three. There's real speed there, real power. I would, that's I would where the dangerous. Time. There's, yeah. a, there's a difference between a top class like back three player, just that high end pace, and even the the. Um, you know the, the sideways movement. You know having that ability, the footwork to be able to deal with that. There is a there's a difference between an international top class guy and a and like a really good rugby player that probably no doubt is. You know, so we'll see. Yeah, that'll be an interesting one. It's now time for the left wing moment of the week in association with Bank of Ireland. Uh, Luke, we'll go to you first. What was your moment of the week? Mine's actually from uh, a different sport. It was oh. Simon Zebo. Uh, <laughs> uh, some unbelievable Definitely skill. Content. Yeah. <laughs> well, like sorry, it was unbelievable skill. Like I think. Um, like I, I know there was a, I actually am one of those people that hates people sliding in with their feet first but I actually think it was okay to do if you were kind of coming in to get the ball but he still the clip over the top of that was an unbelievable piece of skill and to keep it going like it wasn't like he was um, like it looked like he was directing it exactly in pa- in his path and kind of close touches so it actually did look like, like t- top class skills at first I've, I've trained and played with Zeebs like he has silky skills so um, that was good to see it on show he's a big player for them at the end of the season isn't I he? believe he's like contemplating retirement and you know, we're not sure if he's got a new contract on the table and, and might not be there. Like, he looks like one of their best players. He is, but like, it's never been, a, like, I think for him, he just still looks, whether it's the tucked out jersey or something, he just still doesn't look an unbelievable shape to me. Like, for a guy who's such a gifted natural athlete, he should be in better condition at this part of his career, I think. And he's, I just hope that because he's kind of got that more relaxed attitude that he hasn't, 
you know, cut himself a year or two short and what should be should have been a brilliant career. You know, but he struggled with injuries the last couple of years. Yeah. So I wonder is there someone could, that can have a word with him? It might be too late. Oh, but I could see him going over to Chicago or something and having a year or two <laughs> in, in the American League or something like a few. He's such that. a good Why player not? though, isn't it? Like you see the ball oh, handling skills. The Giltinis when they were playing. That would have makes been a difference to him. And like he's getting in ahead of Haley now and Haley was a banker he's for months for the last couple of years. Yeah, he's, he is like Zebo is a class player. Like yeah. no, matter, no matter what you think about different parts, he's actually a really smart defender as well. Well, he's not, not going to hit you hard or anything like that, but he, he rarely makes wrong decisions and things. I, I like him a lot as a rugby brain, and I think he's important for Munster. I really do. I've, I've felt that for a long time. Mm. Good. Your moment. Yeah, I'm going to go clean, clean the Maloney scoring the, the, the try that set up Ireland's win on uh, on Saturday to, to finish third in the Six Nations and qualify for the World Cup. And given where she's been and how she was picked on or left out of the squad on form for the last two years, and she's come back in and fairly... You know, given you know, kind of laid that bare as what for what it was. You know, she's she's still a very good rule player. She's still well able to do her job, and given everything she's been through and how she stood up for herself and her team and and got ostracised for for two or th- two or three years to come back and do it. And for that team, look, I'm not sure if qualifying for the top tier of WXV one yeah, is, is great like news for them. Prize. But it's like, yeah. we, we take the World Cup qualification, we, we might leave the great, other one. Like, well, like you know, th- th- it's a. Uh, for a team that's been battered for the last couple of years to have a day out like that is, is really great and for her I, I was just delighted for her to get that, that moment for them as well Rhodes. ah huge you know a couple of weeks ago yeah. like, that was pretty ugly so yeah it's great it was, I was delighted for them too. absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah no it was great yeah and to qualify for the World Cup and like after like not sniffing a win in, in, in Six Nations to, to get two as you said it was, yeah. was, was great to see especially like hammering Wales and then digging one out against Scotland I'm going with the AIL final as well another kind of great rugby moment of the week Cork Conwing Matthew Bowen his tackle on Connor Tackled, Phillips yeah unbelievable <laughs> Unbelievable tackle. <laughs> like that was tearing your like if they score there, I think they win the game. To chase them down, not only to get them to ground, but then to hold them up over the line. Although you were saying you think it was probably it should have been a, maybe a penalty for. Well, should, uh, I think Phillips. This is it was an unbelievable. You're ruining the great moment. I, th- <laughs> I, I think Phillips should be allowed to place the ball because he does everything he can. Like he obviously tries to score, but he still has control. He does everything he can to rest his body back into the right side and, and place it and, you're, and, and Bowen is, I think it's Bowen or maybe one of the defenders gets in and just like you're not releasing this ball and it's a bit like the choke tackle I think it, it rewards negative, the, negative play a little bit but that's not to in any way diminish what Bowen yeah. did it was an incredible piece of skill and a great moment too. That was, and I'm glad one of us picked it because it, yeah. it was definitely merits it, and it was, is, is Billy Holland coaching the team there? He's the assistant Johnny Holland's Johnny the, Holland is yeah. the head coach Okay, okay. Dennis Fogg's in there out. as yeah. well yeah, yeah okay. it's a great so ticket I, saw the, I, I only realised that when I saw the, the change room photo after I think just yeah. on Instagram the Cork Con guys always stick around Cork Con like, here yeah. here yeah. the Con are here <laughs> <laughs> that was my first club yeah well, I love Con yeah. Yeah, you're, you're, not your alma mater but your club alma mater yeah it was like because to be fair a man sent off once they did two men in the bin they were really right in there look at times like and turn your to some didn't get over the line. I know you were saying you were watching it earlier, but it, it is. I, I know, like, obviously, we don't talk AIL in this podcast, but like, the finals have been great occasions the last couple of years. And I know. even around the clubs, like, the crowds have, are up. A lot more contracted players are playing in the league. I, I know some of them probably, you know, if the AIL was in it, if it was next weekend, I know it would clash with the Champions Cup game and not get the attention it got. But like, you know, Finton Gunn was playing for Turner all season. He was over in South Africa. That's a bit unfortunate that lads who were, were involved all year. Um, and Con would have been equally affected by Munster lads being away but it's definitely on the rise and I think finding a place for it I mean even the fact that it stops now which is probably good for the amateur players but for the the pro guys who need games yeah, it's, it's kind of not great that there's no games between now and July anyway that's a we could be here all night point, yeah. okay very quick predictions for Leinster Northampton I'm going Leinster by 10 points Ooh, at least points as well um <laughs> I think it'll be a blowout. Leicester by ten, I think as well. I think that's fair. I think I don't know what, what are the bookies calling. It? I think it's twelve. Twelve, yeah, yeah. To lose her twenty point favourites against Quint. That's like, like, yeah, I like a lot, I think. Look, I know what you're going to get from yeah. Quinns, to be honest. Well, they they just won in Bordeaux in their last game, and yeah, they, but they, they beat Northampton at the weekend. That it's defending. actually a basketball score. I was going to say cricket score, but it's actually a basketball score. It was yeah. unbelievable. What a game! I just thought, yeah, I don't see Quinns being able to live with Toulouse. And unless Northampton get an unbelievable start and get a lead, and suddenly being a Crow Park becomes a bit of a Jesus, where are we? We're 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 not in our home. We're not going you know, yeah. to leave anymore. And there's all these people have come to see us, and we're down. And we've you know we've had a few difficult moments when we've been down before, and the lads lost last weekend. And then there's a bit of doubt planted. But I can't see that. Do you know what? It could happening. be a tricky bit as well, the game to watch, because um, I've said this to loads of people, but the, the kicking there is tricky. Yeah, you've said I always that. remember the kicker saying, Raj and, and uh, Johnny saying it was tricky to kick there because there was nothing really to aim for because the pitch is so much smaller than the actual stadium. So 
could Ross Byrne have a have an off day there or whoever's kicking, you know? Um it could happen it could be the shoot could be on the other foot too, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it, that that is an interesting like, so that I, could make the game tighter, could it make you sweaty? I, could I, you know, I think who Saints knows? are a good team as well. Like I've been at both their games against Munster. I know Leinster at full strength are stronger than Munster, but like their back line, if they get a platform, is very dangerous. Finn Smith's a really good controlling ten. They've won away at Tolman Park already this season. They've had a great season already. Like, you know, Laws is an incredible player towards the end of his Northampton career. It's a bit of a cause. I just wonder about their tight five and I wonder about their bench being able to live with Leinster. But, like, they rolled off some serious athletes in the final 20 minutes against Munster. And I, I did, guys, you wouldn't necessarily have a big profile, but they were pretty good players. There's a recipe to cause trouble. Like, you've got a dangerous back three, you've got quick backs. They have very, very quick backs. Good nine ten, good pack. Like it is, they'll, they'll be tricky to, to to get through. You know, I think where you t- what will give you confidence is probably the last fifteen minutes. If you know that Leinster bench, th- there is a difference there, and that is that that could really show. I think in a big game, you know, or, sorry, could even be the last twenty minutes when you know, how quick Nienabar puts on the guys. So, um, that that's probably what gives you confidence that they hit the spread at least, probably or just close to it. But a few, few things that. there, a few things to make you nervous. There's a recipe for there's a recipe for not having to do something, but it's. It's going to be very hard for them. I think. I think it's a Leinster to lose final. I think everyone is kind of yeah. looking forward to the first That's time. The one first wants. time ever. They've never played in a final. Really? It, yeah, it will be absolutely cracking yeah. game. So, but hopefully we get a great occasion this weekend. I'd like to thank Rod and Luke for joining me on this week's episode of the Left Wing Podcast. We will be back next week to recap the Champions Cup semi final and discuss plenty more. In the meantime, you can subscribe to us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. So until next time, thanks so much for listening and goodbye.